We're creating a survival bracelet today. We're going to start with a diamond knot, measure our, our wrist, create a loop, and then fill in the gaps with a, a cobra stitch, kind of a, a basic for survival, survival bracelets. Survival bracelets can get pretty complicated. The materials we're going to need this time around to be self-sufficient are going to be two lengths of paracord, both wingspan in length. Our first step is to be able to, is to create a diamond knot. You're going to take two cords. They can be of any other color. I'm going to use these two to, to represent this. To create a diamond knot, you're going to first take one side. I use my left hand side. And I'm going to turn it with the rope going underneath itself. From there, you're going to take the other side. This is going to go under around, or I guess on top of, and then underneath that other tag end. You're going to finish this part with going through the loop, underneath and around itself, and come out on the other end. The last step is both these tails are going to come up and go through the center point. Grab both tails, and you're going to pull these tight. This is going to take a little bit of time. You want it to be even. So, kind of pull it and wrap it around itself. And then as you squish it, it'll start forming shape. From here, it just takes a little bit of practice and a little bit of work. Uh, that, what I'm doing here right now is making all the tags, getting it nice and tight. So you're going to end up with a knot that looks something like this. Once you've made the diamond knot, the next part is going to be to measure your wrist and then make a loop. How to do that is to pull up your material to the top of your wrist. You're going to see the knot and you're going to see this loop. With this, you're going to be, the whole goal is to make this a little bit thicker. So because of that, you want to add a little bit of give. So if you look off to the side of my wrist, you can see as I'm working, I want it to be pretty loose so I can have a little bit of give in here. At this point, I can drop my knot, and I'm holding where I want the end of my loop to be. And that's kind of important. So you're still going to keep that. You're going to take your tail ends, and you're going to make a loop, not above your finger, but you want the loop to be underneath your finger, or ending right about there. So. At this point, I have it crossed on top. That's the end of my loop. That's where I want my wrist to be able to fit into. My next goal is to create uh, four strands. So you can see I have two. I have a strand off to the side here, and my fourth strand is still kind of stagnant and out in the open. So you're gonna come across, and just go through it. It actually doesn't matter which way you go. I'm gonna go on top, because that makes sense. I'm gonna pinch it again with my thumb. As you can see, it's still kind of loose, and that's okay. You have your four strands now. You have two here in the center. This is what you're going to be wrapping around, and then you have your two working ends. With your two working ends, now it's going to be to continue. You're going to be making the cobra stitch. So well, you can work either way. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start on my left hand. So I'm going to pull this across. When I pull it across, you see that there's a loop made here and there's a tail end here. You're going to take the other strand. You're going to go over this loop. You're going to go under the two that are that are hanging down. They're going to end up being your wrist or going around your wrist. And then you're going to come back up through 
the loop you've made. It's kind of tricky, so you're going to have to kind of go s slow with this. You're going to continue to pull up. Once you reach this, it's a, it is, it's very tricky, or it just takes a little bit. You're going to want to pull it nice and tight. So you work it up close, and you pull it tight. At this point, once you have your first cobra stick, Every time you stop, you're going to look at your sides. When you see the loop, that's the place where you actually make your next loop. So you curl it around, place this over. It goes underneath the two and back up to the hole you made. So each time it should look something very similar to this. As you follow the yellow, it goes over or goes under and up through. This one goes under and down through. And each time you want to pull it very tight, you can work it up with your fingers a bit and then you cinch it down with your wrists. And that's pretty much the process. Yours will continue down. I'll stop there. You see the process as it goes. And your finished product, well, with whatever your colors are, looks somewhere very similar to what we have here.